Okay. So today we will go be uh, continuing our uh, lessons in terms of solids and fluids. So if you uh, okay can uh, check your textbook, your survey textbook. Okay, this chapter should be in chapter nine. Okay, the chapter of solids and fluids in this topic. Okay, we will learn just two subtopic, which is uh, uh, solid deformations and also uh, Archimedes principle. Okay, there are two sub chapters only on this chapter. So before this, okay, uh, from chapter eight, uh, we jump to chapter thirteen, and then after that, chapter fourteen, and then we come back to chapter nine. And we'll be uh, we will end with the chapter thirteen afterwards. Okay, um, no, the chapter uh twelve. Okay, so there are uh there are a few chapters left to cover until because today is a uh, we are on a week eleven. Okay, week eleven. So I'm expecting that we will end our session on a uh, week twelve or maybe week thirteen. Okay, there will be no class on week 14. Uh, I think because of uh, we already covered everything. But uh, if you want to do uh, um, some uh, uh, revisions, then it's okay. Okay, so this chapter is chapter 9, solids and fluids. So in this chapter, okay, we will learn uh, states of matter. Okay, first of all, states of matter which uh, contribute, uh, uh, which consists of solid, okay, liquid, and gas. Okay, so that normally when we talk about solid, liquid, and gas, it probably predominates of on Earth. Okay, meaning that, okay, uh, uh, we like we live in uh, the uh, on Earth that contains solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, solid, liquid, and gas. But there is also a plasma that predominates in the universe. Okay, predominates the universe. Okay, so plasma, uh, some things that we cannot see. Okay, we cannot see plasma. So this chapter introduces basic properties of solid and liquids. Okay, that also includes some properties of the gases. So what is solid? Okay, I will just uh, uh, describe briefly what is solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, so a solid must have a definite volume. Okay, definite volume a very uh, full volume, okay, have definite shape, meaning that we can calculate volume, we can calculate shape, and the more, all the molecules are held in their specific location. So basically, when we talk about, okay, uh, atoms or atom, atoms that be connected, okay, from one atoms to uh, one atoms by the electrical forces, okay, so all the atoms or should we name, uh, when, we at, when we have a lot of atoms, it means molecules, okay, should be held in the specific locations, okay, so meaning that uh, we cannot easily turn, so we cannot easily change the molecules or, or specific, uh, uh, and, it's our, and our, uh, we should uh, have a specific location for each molecule, Okay, we cannot easily change the molecules locations uh, when we want to do some modifications. But uh, uh, in this topic, okay, when the solid okay have been deformed, okay, and solid, yeah, so we can we can see afterwards that solid, okay, which have uh, a specific locations for the molecules may be deformed. Okay, may be deformed, maybe okay, um, deformations mean okay. Uh, we can change okay, the nature of the solid. Okay, all right. So we we'll talk about that later on, right? So uh, the molecules will vibrate about the equilibrium position, meaning that okay, it is also vibrating okay at one time or so another. But uh, the uh, the vibrations of the molecules okay, are held on the specific locations, meaning that uh, it's almost not uh, when it's vibrating, it almost uh, that doesn't move anywhere, okay? It's just uh, be on the specific locations, okay? Um, and solids also can be modeled as a springs connecting molecules, okay? Uh, just imagine where all the molecules connect, have been connected by a spring. You know what spring? Okay, spring is, uh, is elastic, 
uh, materials okay that have a properties of uh, a restoring force okay so all molecules have been held together using electrical forces this thing you will learn on on semester two okay you will learn this thing on the semester two right how about electrical forces okay so this is solid okay uh, external forces can be applied okay so see this is external forces can be applied to the solid and compress the material okay so maybe we can force we can make the solid okay to actually try to make the solid change it's uh, 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 change the, the the nature of the solids by applying an external force Okay, maybe we can pull or we can compress the material. Okay, when the force is removed, the solid returns. So, okay, that's why we are we talk about uh, when we have solids uh, returns to its original shape and size. So these properties is called elasticity. Okay, elasticity of the solid. So it's very uh, it's very good to understand that. The solid uh, uh, should have uh, can can return to its original shape because of the elasticity. Okay, so uh, when we talk about solid, try to just imagine that the force that connected all the solids have been made from springs. So from that, you can imagine that all uh, molecules, okay, definitely will uh, or or should be uh, we emphasize solids. Okay, all molecule that should be held in specific locations, okay, may want to return to the original uh, position. May want to return. If we try to, okay, if we try to change its position, then the molecule wants to return back to its original position. Okay, so that's how it means by solid. All right. So this is the, the crystalline solid. Okay. Uh, just to make uh, you understand about solid, okay? Because uh, when you have atoms, have an order structure. So this is uh, quite uh, more uh, information is what is solid all about, okay? So the, this example is salt, okay? Uh, so you learn in chemistry what is salt has been made. So, so this is all about, okay? It's been made from uh, ions of natrium plus and also uh, chloride, chlorine plus ions, okay? So what is amorphous? And we have a crystalline solid, okay? Ordered structure, okay? The word crystalline means we have ordered structure, okay? Ordered meaning that uh, uh, the 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 shape is uh, is uh, absolute, okay? Definite shape, okay? Shape, volume, and how about amorphous solid? Solid amorphous uh, atoms and arrange are uh, arranged uh, mostly almost randomly. Okay, so this is also solid, but in, for the arm of a solid, okay, the atom is not like order. Okay, if you look at this solid, crystalline solid, you can see, okay, uh, you can see the green, the green here uh, represent by a chlorine ion. Okay, and the gray is uh, present by a natrium. So it will order. So after, okay, you should, okay, you can see. Okay, from one solid to another solid, okay, we have an ordered structure. Okay, so, but uh, uh, for the amorphous solid, okay, uh, the examples of amorphous solid is a glass. It okay, may have a random uh, atoms, okay, random atoms. So, when, when we have a random atoms, we have been uh, structurally, uh, not so much, uh, so much structure in the amorphous solid. Uh, the atoms are being arranged uh, like a random position, okay? Right, so for liquid, okay, we may have a definite volume, okay? Or liquid also have a definite volume, but will not have a definite shape, no definite shape, meaning that we can easily change the shape of the liquid, okay? Because the liquid will, will take place Okay, it's contained that we cannot uh, hold a liquid uh, on our own, own hands, okay? Because liquid doesn't have a definite shape. 
but uh, for the solid, okay, normally solid we can hold on our hand because it has a definite shape. Okay, a liquid also exists at a higher temperature than solid. Okay, why? So this uh, uh related to the one that we should learn uh on the on the next chapter. Next next chapter. Okay, the molecules uh wander uh, through the liquid in a random fashion. Okay, a random fashion. So we cannot contain uh where is the position or where is the position of the molecules? Why? Because uh the molecules in the liquid will move randomly. Okay, the intermolecular forces are not strong enough to keep the molecules in a fixed position. Okay, uh, uh, apart from solid, solid is uh, must have a, a definite shape and definite volume that is due to the molecules have been held in a specific location, but not the liquid. Okay, because of the intermolecular forces are not strong enough. Okay, so meaning that if you are trying to imagine uh, uh, molecules of uh, liquid, so it doesn't have uh, uh, some sort of spring like solid. Okay, uh, okay, in this uh, liquid part, a uh, liquid uh, form, okay, it moves randomly because the intermolecular forces. Okay, it, it also have a uh, forces between the charge, but these are the, the forces are not strong enough. Okay, to keep the molecules in a fixed position. So that's why we cannot have a defined action. Okay, and as for the gases, okay, a gas has no defined volume. Okay, this also takes place the container uh, for the full volume, meaning that if you uh, want to know the volume of the gas, okay, for just uh, blow the balloon and, and try to and that is the volume of the gas. Okay, so that's how you and also it has no definite shape. So we cannot hold the uh, uh, gas uh, on our own hands. Okay, but we can put it into the container so that we can hold that things. Okay, so that is not considered as holding the gas. Okay, molecules are in constant random motion. Okay, constant random motion meaning that okay, weaker weaker forces between atoms or molecules the molecules exert only weak forces okay weak forces on each other so we can we can see that the 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 molecules uh, the energy of the molecules okay greater okay weak and also weaker uh, so for 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 solid is a great okay, solid is at uh, okay have a, a high energy between uh, for the molecules okay low okay or medium for the gas for the liquid and also weak for the gas okay average distance between molecules is large compared to the size of the molecules okay average distance between the molecules is large so meaning that Okay, um, or because of no definite volume, no definite shape, so the average distance, okay, okay, all atoms in the gas, okay, have a, a distance that is large, larger than themselves, okay. Maksudnya, jarak dia antara solid, uh, antara, sorry, jarak antara molecules, okay, the distance between the molecules and the size of the molecules are quite different okay so we can see here so that's why we cannot have a definite volume and definite shape okay as for the plasma okay because this contain a bit predominated the uh, universe okay so what is plasma a gas heated to a very high temperature many of the electrons are freed from the nucleus Result is the collections of free electrical charge ions. Okay, long range electrical and magnetic force allow interaction within the plasma. Plasma exists inside stars. Okay, so we don't want to uh, focus on the plasma, just focus on the solid, uh, um, liquid, and gas. But specifically for this topic, we want to focus on solid. Okay, so. 
Okay, the density. Okay, the density of a substance of uniform composition is defined as mass per unit volume. Okay, remember, mass per unit volume. Mass is what? Kg and volume is meter cube. Okay, so the unit, the SI unit will be kg m over 3, kg m negative 3 or kg over m cube. Okay, and okay, remember this thing first, 1 gram per centimeter cube is equivalent to 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, try to, uh, yeah, okay, 1 gram per centimeter cube is equivalent to 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. So what does it mean by centimeter cube and meter cube? We try to imagine this thing, okay? The centimeter cube will be 1 centimeter, okay, 1 centimeter times 1 centimeter times 1 centimeter. So this is centimeter cube. And how about 1 meter cube? Meter cube is... One meter times one meter times one meter. So that is one meter. One meter times one meter times one meter. So it becomes one meter cube. Okay. Can you have one centimeter in one meter? Yes. It's 0 0.1. Slightly small, smaller. Like, okay. A very small value. Right. So, so we can imagine that uh, the difference between centimeter cube and meter cube is the size. But in terms of gram, one gram in a centimeter cube, okay, in a centimeter cube is equivalent to 1,000 kilogram per meter cube. So this one, we can prove this uh, using our conversions. We try to prove this in the conversions, but try to remember the SI unit for the density will be kilogram per meter cube. Okay. So... Uh, the density of most liquids and solids vary slightly with change in temperature and pressure. So, if you uh, if you have uh, uh, a survey textbook, you can refer to Table Nine Point One to see the densities of common uh, common common substance. Okay, the densities of the common sub substance. Okay. The densities of gases vary greatly with the change in the temperature and pressure. Change in temperature and pressure. Okay, the, the, never mind about this. Okay, I want to focus more on this part. Okay, the pressure. Okay, we already learned about uh, solid, liquid, and gas. And we, we also learned about, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, density. Okay, now we learn about pressure. So what is pressure? So the force exerted by a fluid on a submerged object at any point is perpendicular to the surface of the object. Okay, the average pressure P is the force divided by the area. Okay, so what is pressure? Force per unit area. Okay, force per unit area that will give you Newton per meter square. Newton per meter square. That will be the pressure. And sometimes pressure will add, will be uh, known as a Pascal. The unit for pressure will be Pascal or Newton per meter square. Okay, Pascal PA is uh, the unit for the unit for pressure. Okay. All right, so uh, so that's uh, 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 quite a good uh, introduction. So the one that we should discuss more will be the deformations of solids. Okay, the deformations of solids. Okay. Okay. Let me. Uh, we have a one uh, minute uh, uh, break. So I want to download first the. the the, the slides, okay.
if you have a question that you can uh, put in the chat box okay if you have a question that you can put in the chat box so i will try to answer regarding uh, our topics Okay, so let's continue on the deformations of solids. Okay, so the word deformations are deformable, okay? Uh, uh, perubahan, okay? Deform, okay? The, uh, uh, against the word form, formations, uh, bercantum, so deform maksudnya, uh, deform, uh, change, change in the solids, okay? Change in the solids, so deformations of solids. So we want to make change, we want to change the solids properties, okay? We want to change the, the shape or maybe the size or one part of the solids, okay? Maybe uh, do some external force. So that's what it means by the deform deformations of solids, okay? When the forces are removed, the object tends to it, uh, to it, to return to its original shape. So that is the part why, why we call that the solid will have uh, the elastic behavior. So an object undergoing this type of deformations exhibits uh, elastic behavior. So what is elastic behavior? So that's what it means by deformations of solids. Okay. Okay. I want to emphasize that the, the deformations of solids for the let me start from the because the word of deformable. Okay. All objects are deformable. Boleh berubah bentuk. Okay. Berubah bentuk. Uh, dan bentuk macam mana, okay? Is it possible to change the shape or size of both 
of an object through the applications of external forces. Okay, so when the shapes are removed, the object tends to its original shape. Okay, so because of that, an object undergoing these types of deformations exhibit an elastic behavior. So, uh, if we want to discuss the deformations of solid, it must contain elastic behavior. So, elasticity. Okay, so what is elastic properties? Okay, for elastic properties, consider that as a strain. Okay, so what is strain? What is stress? Okay, stress, uh, elastic properties contain uh, stress and strain. Okay, stress is the force per unit area. Okay, this one is also considered as pressure. Okay, stress is what? Force per unit area. So the unit will be Newton per meter square. So that will be stress and how about strain okay so this is the properties of the elastic elasticity which is stress and number two is strain which is the measure measure of amount of deformations okay measure of amount of the deformation so the elastic modulus is the constant proportionality between stress and strain okay stress and strain so how that how's that the different so if you have elastic modulus what is the value okay it should be like this okay stress is equivalent to or stress over strain is equivalent to elastic modulus can you imagine elastic modulus is like a constant value Okay, it's like a constant value, where stress is the is uh, is the uh, force per unit area, while strain is the strain is the measure of amount of deformations. Okay, so what what does it mean by the amount of deformations? So let's look at this. So in the in the elastic modulus, okay, it should be divided into three parts. Okay. We should have number one, a young modulus. Number two is a okay. What does it mean by shear modulus? And number three, we'll have buck modulus. Okay, we have young, we have shear, uh, we have bulk modulus. Okay. So let's go first to the Young modulus. Okay. Right? So, what is young modulus? Okay. Uh, to be on exact uh, uh, examples or to be on exact uh, meaning of the young modulus is the elasticity in length. Okay. As I said to you earlier, that elastic modulus, okay, elastic modulus is a constant value. Okay. Even, okay, we should focus on elastic modulus because. Uh, right now, elastic modulus is a part of stress over strain. Okay, stress over strain. So we'll give you elastic modulus. So if you want to make it uh, interesting, so stress is equivalent to elastic modulus times strain. Okay, stress is equivalent to elastic modulus times strain. You just bring this thing to the uh, right side, so elastic modulus times strain is equivalent to stress. So we can put it uh, anywhere if you want to make it strain. Why is strain stress over elastic modulus? Okay, it's, it's a matter of just uh, really just play around with the equations. So the elastic modulus can be thought as the stiffness of the material. Stiffness of the material. That's why uh, I'm I keep saying that 
the elastic modulus is a constant value. Every material will have a elastic modulus value. So in our words, if you want to make change of the solid, okay, we should focus on these three part. Okay, yang, shear, yang modulus, shear modulus, and bulk modulus. So for yang modulus, okay, uh, the elasticity, the, the 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 one that we should change in the yang modulus is totally on length. Okay, panjang. Okay, we want to change the length, the length of the uh, solid. So yang modulus. When we talk about yang modulus, it should uh, define a length, change in length. Okay, so let's say. If you do have a situation like this, the bar is stressed. Okay, its length is greater than L naught. Okay, try to make, uh, try to imagine uh, when you have a, a, a G clamp, okay, and you have one solid. This is a solid, a solid, I mean, maybe a solid um, metal, I think. Okay, solid metal or a bar, a metal bar. Okay, so it meets from solid. So definitely, a metal bar is a solid. So if you try to apply, okay, try to apply some forces at this point, okay, okay, at this point, try you try to pull, pull the bar, okay. Definitely, we can yeah, with our our naked eye, we cannot see any change to the solid because it's a metal solid, but, uh. If we try to pull, uh, not using your hand, eh, not using your, your own uh, force, but using a machine, try to pull this part, okay, this part, meaning that you will try to change from L0, L0 is what, original, original line, and try to make a certain, just a few, delta L. Delta L is what we call as change in length, okay. You have original length and you have a change in length. So change in length and original length. So uh, so definitely uh, the bar is stretched by the amount of delta L under the action of X, under the action of F. And of course, when F is applied to the a certain area of the object, so F over E is called stress, or so we should we call as pressure. So the for the young model is okay. Uh, SI unit for stress is Pascal. Okay, I, must, I keep saying about uh, uh, stress is a pressure. Okay, because the unit you are using now is Pascal. One Pascal is one liter per meter. So the elastic modulus is called Young modulus. Okay, what why Young modulus? This is Young modulus. A Y, Young modulus, and it's on the left part. Is called um, stress. Okay, because stress we have force per unit area, and on the right part we have strain. Okay, so try to make these things clear. Stress is equivalent to uh, elastic modulus times strain. So stress equivalent to elastic modulus times strain. Okay, so stress is equivalent to elastic modulus times strain. So what is strain? Delta L over so for for young modulus for that particular uh, scenario, so we are trying to apply F over A. A is equivalent to young. This one will be given, or maybe you have to find. It's either it's just uh, either two. Maybe you are be given given in table or appendix, or maybe okay, you should. Calculate. Calculate the Young modulus. And L is the uh, change in length and L naught is the original length. 
Okay, so that is for Young Modulus. Young Modulus applies to a stress of either tension or compression. So, uh, well, it's just, uh, this is uh, the Young Modulus, we should apply the Young Modulus, not just for only the one that we should pull. Maybe we can pull this, uh, we can push this thing uh, ke dalam. Kita tolak dia. Instead of tarik, kita tolak dia pula. Boleh ke tak? Boleh. Any change of change in length will consider a uh, Young Modulus. Okay, how can we know the Young Modulus from our uh, uh, equations? Uh, so just look at this part. Okay, on the right part will contain length. Delta L over L. Delta L is what? Change in length. And L is the original length. So that's why we are saying that we should use a Young modulus. Okay, the constant value that we should get from the equation is called Young modulus. Okay, so the experiment show the change in length for a fixed external force is proportional to the original length. The force necessary to produce a given strain is proportional to the cross-sectional area. Okay, so never mind, just clear your mind that, okay, Young, uh, young modulus is a part of the elastic modulus. Okay, we should have a young. We should have. Uh, we should have three, three, uh, three equation, three, three, three cases: young modulus, shear modulus, and bulk modulus. Okay, first, if you want to make change of the solid uh, through the change in length, okay, menggunakan perubahan panjang. Uh, perubahan panjang eh, change in length so we should use yang modulus okay okay right so let's look at the elastic behavior of the graph it is possible to exceed the elastic limit of the material okay so when you look at the uh, a graph of stress over stream over here okay so we should uh, when we look at the uh, the graph uh, the stress and strain is as, uh, exactly directly proportional to each other okay until it reach the elastic limit now this is the limit this is the point where it should be the limit so the stress and strain is directly proportional if the stress increase strain also increase but until before it reach the elastic limit when it reach the elastic limit Okay, what will happen? It will no longer directly proportional. Okay, look at the graph. The graph should be like this. Now it becomes the flatter. Okay, flatter and no longer directly proportional and ordinarily does not return to its original length. So it, 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 in the normal uh, part of the elastic behavior of this, so this part, it still have elastic behavior. What does it mean by elastic behavior? Once written to its original position. So that's what you mean by elastic behavior. Okay. So when we plot a graph of stress over strain, we should emphasize on the elastic behavior part, which means at this point, okay, mana mana point the atas elastic behavior. So the or the material should return to its original position, but when it reach the elastic limit, so there will be no longer directly proportional. Number one, number two, is ordinary does not return to its original length. Okay, so meaning that the original uh, what whatsoever length or, or, or volume or maybe uh, area does not return to its original. Okay, and now what happened? If the stress continue, it surpasses its ultimate strength. And the ultimate strength is the greatest stress the object can withstand without breaking. And then after it reach the breaking point, then it should break. Okay, so what is the at the breaking point? For a brittle material, the breaking point is just beyond its uh, ultimate strength. Okay. For a ductile material, after passing the ultimate strength, the material thins and stretch at a lower stress level before breaking. So what does happen? Okay, 
Uh, when we reach a, a, the breaking point for a brittle metal, brittle ni ialah mudah uh, hancur. Uh, hancur. Contoh dia macam uh, batu bata. That is a brittle, brittle material. Okay. Maksudnya kalau dia pecah, dia akan hancur terus. Berderai. Okay. Brittle material. And for the ductile material, ductile material ni biasanya pada uh, besi. Uh, besi ni ductal material. So apa berlaku? Yeah, when they reach the uh, the breaking point, after passing the ultimate strength, the material thins. Maksudnya kita boleh perasan eh, kalau ada besi, kan bila kita dah, bila kita dah besi asal, bila lama-lama kita uh, tarik dia, lama-lama dia akan jadi macam T. At one point, uh, dia akan jadi, dia susah nak, nak ni eh. Uh, after passing the ultimate strength the material thins and stretch at the lower stress level before breaking sebelum dia putus dia akan jadi macam ni dulu but for uh, brittle material kata lah awak tarik batu bata awak tarik dia terus dia kan putus just beyond the ultimate strength okay Ha, so kita tengok lah oh, Where is the ultimate strength If stress continue So this is the, the bahagian yang dinamakan Ultimate strength Okay ha, So kalau untuk brittle material Ultimate strength tu duduk dekat-dekat je dengan uh, the, uh, Dia tak payah jauh Tapi kalau untuk ductile material uh, break, Dia akan jauh duduk jauh sikit uh, Breaking point So, that is all about your modulus. Okay, so we break for one minute before we continue the shear modulus.
Okay, so let's continue. Right? So this is a shear modulus, okay? Before this, we learned about Young modulus. Now we learn about shear modulus. So what is shear modulus? So this is the elasticity that takes place uh, uh, for the shape. Okay, it means it means we want to change the shape of the solids. Okay, to be uh, to be more precise, we want to change the solids in terms of shape. So I can you imagine shear modulus. Okay, so if you want to imagine the shear modulus, okay, you want uh, you may have to look at the how we should do like this. Okay, take your textbook or take your very thick uh, book. So try to imagine that. Okay. Uh, place that book uh, on the table and try to uh, give an uh, as external force on the top of the table okay on the top of the book like this okay and of course the table should have a, a friction to the left and we should okay push the top of the book to the right okay try to imagine so that the the book originally like this on the table okay and after we do some modifications for the shear means you do some modifications for the shape of the book so it becomes like this okay can you imagine so from this to this okay so this is shear all about okay the forces may be parallel to the one of the object faces okay the forces parallel to the object faces the stress is called shear stress, defined as the ratio of the magnitude, and the shear strain is the ratio of the horizontal displacement of the and the height of the object. So that's why, for the shear modulus, okay, we may have to use F over E is equivalent to S, and delta X is the and H. Okay, F over E is normal, it's a force per unit area, and this one is the shear modulus. Okay, and delta X, what is delta X? Okay, delta X is this thing, meaning that from the original one, okay, the original one, right? Let's see this part. So this part is considered as delta x. And what is h? H is the height of the object. Okay, height of the object. So delta x is the change in the shear. Okay, shear stress displaced the front cover of the book to the right relative to the back cover. Okay, so back again. So delta x is the change. So this is the original book, and the one that we displace is called delta x. Okay, and the height of the book is considered as uh, h. So that is mean by the stress and strain. Okay, this part we have a shear stress, and this part is considered as shear strain okay so there is no volume change in this type of deformation remember the force is parallel to the cross sectional area cross sectional area so why is where is our cross sectional area here okay and this is cross sectional area so the force is parallel or maybe we can say the cross-sectional area is on top of this one, okay? So it's, uh, it's pointing this part, the atas, and perpendicular, like this, okay? But uh, maybe we can, if you look at the uh, forces may be parallel, so perpendicular to the cross-sectional uh, perpendicular to the the one that should be in the uh, side of the uh, side of the object but parallel okay parallel to the one of the object faces so object faces 
is A, so force is parallel to the object faces. Okay. But, okay, it's perpendicular to the cross sectional area. Okay, remember? So, again, this is the cross sectional area. Force we do is here, is force. So, it becomes like this. So, we may have a delta x. This one is h. This one is f. Okay, on top of it, this is cross section area. Okay, but faces, this is faces. Okay, it's parallel to the faces, but perpendicular to the cross section area. Okay, uh -huh. and of course, it still remain as stress equivalent to elastic modulus time stream. Okay. Now we move to bulk modulus or volume elasticity. So try to imagine this thing. We may have an elastic modulus. So elastic modulus will be given Yang, Che, and this one, Buck. So Yang will take place for length. Length is considered as one dimension. Che is for area, okay, a cross-sectional area like, okay, it's considered as two dimension. And Buck, okay, will take place volume, which considered as three dimension. So can you imagine when we want to change or we want to do some deformations to the solid <clears throat> and we must look, okay, thoroughly where we want to change, where we want to do deformations, okay, maybe to the length, to the area or maybe to the volume. Okay, so that will be given by three elastic modulus. So we have Young, we have shear and we have bulk modulus. Okay, so for young, consider as to be change in volume and change in length. For shear, change in area, and bulk is the change in volume. Okay, let's go to bulk modulus. Okay, so bulk modulus characterize the, the response of an object to a uniform squeezing. Squeezing. Okay, maksudnya kita kecut kaje, kita cuba rapat kaje. Okay. Suppose the forces are perpendicular to and act on on the surface, okay, where especially when object is immersed in the fluid, so the object undergoes a change in volume without change in shape, okay, no change in shape but change in volume. So what does it mean? Like this. A volume stress, delta P, is the ratio of the change in the magnitude of the applied force to the surface area, okay. Look at the figure okay, on your right. So all the blue color arrow is considered as force and all the the one that the force uh, is heading to is called area. So force per unit area is called pressure. Okay, so in these types of pressure, we call that as volume stress. Okay. So the volume strain is equal to the ratio of the change in the volume to the original volume. So in our in our terms, so it should be like this. Okay, so they, they try to make it simpler, but I want to do like this. F over A is equal to negative B delta B over B. Okay, so this is change in volume. This one is volume. And how about negative B? This one is called bulk modulus. And this one is the stress. A material with a large bulk modulus is difficult to compress. OK, 
Okay, the negative sign. Ah, so if you look carefully, uh, the other, the previous two uh, modulus doesn't have negative, but on the back modulus, uh, it include, conclude, it comes with the negative. The negative sign is included since uh, an increase in pressure will produce decrease in volume. Okay, so exactly okay, when we do uh, elastic modulus, uh, for specifically for young. Okay, when we try to put uh, stress on the area, stress on the area, so the strain also increase. Okay, when we apply force, okay, then the length also increase. Uh, so in, 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 in area also the same. Okay, if you want to uh, do uh, shear modulus, okay, when the shear modulus increase, or so I call it as a pressure or stress or force in terms of area increase, so it will also increase the delta x and over h. But in this part, okay, when we increase our pressure, okay, when we increase our stress, okay, uh, from a, a normal push or normal squeeze to the a very intense uh, intense eh, maksudnya awak cuba tekan dengan lebih kuat so what does uh, what will happen it will produce a decrease in volume okay cuba bayangkan ada satu bola plastik kan bola plastik tapi bola plastik tu bukan uh, bukan dibuat daripada gas lah uh, maksudnya kita cuba tekan something yang uh, yang diperbuat daripada solid kan very very hard Okay, that's why. Okay, bila kita cuba tekan, maknanya tingkatkan kita punya stress tetapi yang akhirnya dia tidak meningkatkan volume tapi dia makin kecil kan. Bila makin kecil, maksudnya volume will be decrease. Ha, yang ni dia terbalik, terbalik dengan yang lain-lain tadi. Okay, yang lain-lain tadi kita cuba tarik dia makin panjang, kita cuba besarkan dia makin besar. Tetapi yang ni kita cuba naikkan pressure tetapi volume akan turun. Uh, okay, so B is always positive. Value dia always positive. Tapi negative sign itu. Uh, sama juga macam F equals to negative KX. Uh, negative itu dia explain oleh restoring force. Uh, macam tu eh. Uh, when we talk, when we uh, do uh, calculations, K okay, doesn't have to put negative. The compressibility is the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. Okay, that's compressibility is the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. Solid have young bulk and shear moduli. Uh, liquids have only bulk moduli. They will not undergo a shearing or tensile stress. Okay, the, the liquid will flow is that. Okay. The ultimate strength of a material is the maximum force per unit area. The material can withstand before it breaks or fracture. Some materials are stronger in compression than in tension. Okay, compression tekan, tension tarik. Okay, so before we uh, we go to our next topic, which is the Archimedes principle, okay, we may have a one, two or two minutes break before we we can uh, uh, we can uh, proceed with the next uh, subject. Thank you.
Okay, if you do have a question, then please put in, in, in my chat box, okay? So that I will try to answer that uh, if you if we have time afterwards, okay? Or maybe we can stop first. Right, so let's continue. Uh, continue on the Archimedes principle. So... On this part, on this chapter, it contains a lot of uh, sub-chapters such as this part, okay, uh, the, uh, the post and beam arc, okay, a semicircular arc, so okay, why we should build this kind of arc, okay, uh, in terms of the stability, and of course, uh, it also contains pressure, uh, variations of pressure with depth, Okay, but this one, uh, I think uh, is, okay, we, we, we will not discuss this part, okay, because um, we don't have, uh, I think this one should have been covered uh, very good, uh, very, very well during your secondary schools. So, uh, because of that, uh, uh, for PH1094, Okay, we uh, actually try to uh, take back all these chapters, okay, because this chapter doesn't uh, doesn't include in your PH1094, okay, so don't, but don't bother much in terms of pressure and the depth equations, all this Pascal and Bernoulli, but we only take one part, okay, which means we should learn uh, the Archimedes, Archimedes, okay, the Archimedes principle. Okay, we uh, neglect the Bernoulli, the Pascal principles and the pressure, depth and depth, so on. But uh, on all of that, okay, now we should concentrate more on the Archimedes principle. Okay, so what is Archimedes principles? So we want to know about a buoyant force. So what is buoyant force? Okay, so what is Archimedes principles? Uh, any object completely, okay, any object completely or partially, okay, completely means what, okay, we should try to break this thing, if you have a liquid or if you have a solution, so you put these things completely, submerged, okay, how about partially, partially is partial, okay, partial, submerged in a fluid, okay, we often use fluid, because fluid means a liquid or gases, okay, liquid or gas, so that's what it means by fluid, okay, that's why the words Archimedes, uh, we doesn't, uh, we should know that uh, when it's completely or partially submerged, it's not just a liquid, okay, bukan masuk dalam air, bukan masuk dalam larutan semata-mata, but fluid, bendali, okay, Melayu panggilnya bendali. Okay, that includes by uh, liquid and gas. So in gas also, we can apply Archimedes principle. Of course, okay, the original Archimedes principle is based on uh, when you submerge, uh, 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 you submerge an object into the water. Okay, so the uh, by a force whose magnitude is equal to, okay, magnitude, okay, a force, it's about force. Okay, Archimedes talk about force, whose magnitude, the magnitude, meaning that the magnitude of the force is based on equal to, ob, equal to eh, force, or you see force is equal to wake of the fluid displaced by the object. Meaning that, okay, if you do have one fluid, okay, this is original fluid, okay, before it comes to this, before it comes to this. So, so for this part, this object have already takes this part of the fluid. So this part of the fluid where we measure, where we weigh, is equivalent to force. Where is it force? And together for the for the for the partially, so the part where it takes the the the, the fluid. Okay, so when we wake, this one will be equivalent to buoyancy force. 
Okay, force whose magnitude is equal to the weight of the fluid. So, so we should understand Archimedes principle uh, very good because for Archimedes principle, okay, is talk about force. Okay, the upward force is called a buoyant force. The upward force is called buoyant force. The physical cause of the buoyant force is the pressure difference between the top and the bottom of the object. Okay. So the net upward force is the buoyant force. The magnitude of the buoyant force of the common cannonball equals to the weight of the displaced fluid. Okay. When we talk about, uh, again, I should mention uh, what is buoyant force. Okay. Force. Whose water a fluid displays weight okay is equivalent to weight of the fluid displaced. Okay, frost equivalent to equals to the weight of the fluid space, and of course. When you talk about this, the buoyant force is the pressure. Uh, it's actually the pressure between difference between top and the bottom of the object. Top and the bottom of the object. So we should say that the pressure at the top and the bottom are different due to what? Due to height. So because of that, the buoyancy force is equivalent to Rho G V. Okay. Rho G V or maybe Rho V G doesn't matter. Okay. This actually comes from F equals to M G. Okay. F equals to M G. But on the M part, you know the density is equivalent to M over V. Okay. So M is equivalent to density times with V. Okay, so this one include in this part becomes rho v g. Rho of what? Rho of the fluid, velocity, uh, volume of the fluid times with gravity. Remember, okay, we cannot have a density okay, because sometimes students always make mistakes because the buoyant force is equivalent to the weight of the displaced fluid, not the not the weight of the object. Uh, remember one thing, weight of the fluid displaced, not weight of the object. That's why in here, we consider a density of fluid, a volume of fluid times gravity. Okay, so this one is actually weight of the fluid. So buoyant force, Fb is equivalent to weight of the fluid space. The volume force is the same for a totally submerged object of any size, shape, or density. Because what? Because what? Because regardless of the size, shape, or density of the object. Now let's say if you have ball going into some fluid and maybe another uh, another container contains uh, uh, a cube going into the same fluid so regardless of the object the size of the object okay regardless of the object so it's still but you are using the same uh, fluid so maybe this one is water this one is water so it still gives you the same buoyant force because buoyant force is uh, totally depending on the role or density of the fluid and the volume of the fluid. If we are using the same uh, kind of uh, fluid, so the value of the uh, weight of the fluid displaced is the equivalent. So that's why you are saying the buoyant force is the same for a totally submerged object of any size, shape, or density. Okay, so learn this thing first. Okay, we should learn uh, the basic part of the 
boiling force. Okay, the boiling force is exerted by the fluid. Okay, whether an object sinks or float. Okay, whether uh, an object sinks or float depends on the relationship between the boiling force and the weight. Okay, so this is the Archimedes principle for the totally submerged object. Okay, totally submerged object. So the upward boiling force is B equivalent to density of fluid times V object times G. Okay, let's look at the difference between this thing. Okay, this is the totally for the totally submerged object. Okay, totally submerged object. All right. When we uh, earlier, I should keep I keep saying about buoyant force is equivalent to density of fluid times V of fluid times G to get the buoyancy force. But what happened to the first statement? The upward buoyant force is B equals to uh, density, uh, fluid uh, density. Okay. Katakannya ada V object times G. So what does it mean? Okay, alright. So don't 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 confuse between these two. Okay, in order to get a volume of the fluid, a vol volume of the fluid displaced is actually equivalent to. Okay, you should remember volume of the fluid displaced is equivalent to the volume of the Object. So let's say if you have a, a, a rectangular, a rectangular object. Uh, sorry, a cube object. Cube object entering some fluid. So totally submerged object. So if you want to get the the volume of the uh, fluid displaced, so how can we calculate the volume of fluid displaced easily? So by using the shape of the object. So the shape of the object is cube. So we can calculate the, the the volume of the object that is also considered as volume of the fluid. Okay, faham ya? Eh? Maksudnya, nak dapatkan volume fluid, eh, nak dapatkan volume fluid, macam mana? Takkan nak kena calculate. So kita terpaksa calculate volume of the object. Because volume of object boleh kira. Okay, volume of fluid tak boleh kira. Kalau tak tahu, tak boleh kira. So, kita kena dapatkan bentuk dia. Okay, bentuk dia. So, bentuk dia cube lah. So, kita kira lah cube ni. So, cube sebesar, sebesar cube ni lah yang jadi uh, volume of fluid. So, that's why dia buat V object kali dengan G. Okay. So, the downward gravitational force is W equals to mg. So, it's W equals to mg is rho of the object, V of the object. Okay. So, this thing, the second statement, the downward gravitational force. So, W equals to mg. So, w equals to mg is specifically for not the fluid but the object because object is good. When we throw the objects into the fluid, and the fluid, uh, the, the object will uh, try to, uh, okay, submerge. Okay, that's uh, that's considered uh, uh, density of the object is greater than density of fluid. So that's why it's going down. So in here, m is mass of the object, and okay, sorry. Uh, mg so m is uh, density is m over v so this part m over v is is m is equivalent to rho of the object v of the object so we put inside here so we come rho of the object v of the object times g so another rho g v but these things is for directly for the object so the net force okay the net force, as I mentioned, okay, when we have a cube inside the fluid, okay, we have a cube inside the fluid, okay, definitely it will have, okay, mg, that pulling uh, to the downward uh, gravitational force, and we also have fb. So fb is given by rho of fluid, 
uh, v of object times g. So this thing is given. Well, force gravitational force is given by rho of the object v object times g. So when we consider this both two, now it becomes rho of the fluids minus rho of the object times v object times g. So that's how you try to answer. That is due to what? That's depending on the situation. Maybe in this part, okay, while we put a, a, a buoyancy force uh, up front, that is due to maybe the value of buoyancy force is uh, larger than. So we can see uh, either uh, the object is getting submerged or maybe try to float. So daripada sini kita dapat tahu yang yang objek ini semakin uh, terbenam ke bawah ke ataupun semakin nak naik ke atas. If FB, FB, buoyancy force greater than uh, objek, so uh, F objek, so now float. Okay, but if F objek greater than FB, I'll be submerged. Ah, okay, so you must understand this equation. So for the totally submerged object, so the object is less dense than the fluid, the object experience a net upward force is given by here. So if the object is the great the less than a uh, fluid's of uh, density, then our object densities of the object you know, less than density of the fluid then the object will experience a net force, net upward force, like I'm saying just now. And for the totally submerged object, if the object, if the density of the object is greater than density of the fluid, then the net force is downward. Okay, we have proven, okay, we have proved that this part, okay, like I, I try to, uh, so now it becomes, B minus W will become negative. Well, we will become positive value. So it will experience uh, net upward force. But when B minus W will get negative, so it will object downward. that's all due to the density of the object and also density of the fluids. Okay, for the floating object, the object is in the static equilibrium. Okay, the word is static equilibrium. So the upward buoyant force is balanced by the downward force. Okay, this one is Fb is equivalent to W. Object. Okay, meaning that buoyancy force is equivalent to the weight of the object. Okay, the volume of the fluid displaced corresponds to the volume of the object beneath the fluid level. So in this part, okay, we can calculate the floating objects, eh? the forces balance. Okay. So try to cross it over. Now it becomes... V object, so density object, V object equivalent to density of fluid times weight V of fluid. Okay, so in order to do that, we can jumble up all the equations to become like this. Meaning that this one, when we consider G, eh? G, G. So G, you can cancel out. This one is the uh, weight of the object. This one is weight of uh, uh, buoyancy. Okay, so this one is buoyant. Uh, on the right part is the buoyant force. On the uh, left part is the weight of the object. So when we talk about floating, floating half-half. Eh? I mean, we have a half-half of B and FG. Okay, so that is very intense discussion in terms of Archimedes principles.
Okay, so I would like to uh, to show you some examples of the Archimedes principle. Maybe we can look at the at the tutorial part that I want to share with you. Uh, this tutorial. This is uh, the tutorial 10, the chapter 9. Eh? Okay, we may have to look, we may have a look to the. Uh, okay, let's look at the chapter as uh, question one. A table tennis ball has a diameter 3.8 centimeters and average density of 0.084 gram per centimeter cube. What force is required to hold it completely submerged? Underwater. What force is required to completely submerge? So we can say when you talk about completely submerge under the water, meaning that uh, the ball will have three forces acting on it: a downward gravitational force, a, up, uh, a buoyant force, and lastly the applied force. Because uh, we must consider the ball is not uh, uh, bukan dia naik dengan sendiri. Dia perlu ditahan. So, dia kata, what force is required? Maksudnya perlu ada external force. Uh, so, ada tiga jenis force. Force yang pertama, downward gravitational force. Itu yang kita buat adalah V, apa, density. Density of the ball, V ball dengan G. Okay. And ada lagi satu, buoyancy force. Uh, ada V, ada rho, rho of the water. Because we are using water. Lepas tu, V of the water sama macam ball, boleh potong lah. Kali dengan G kan. Uh, so nampak macam mana di calculate. Mg tolak B. Okay, F is Mg. Uh, the F is okay, kalau kita tengok F is equivalent to Mg tolak B. Dia buat uh, calculate the external force ya. Dia ambil, dia calculate terdapat negatif 0.258 newton. Cuba tengok dekat sini. Density of the ball dia bawa masuk yang dalam ni 4 pi r cube. Ya, kenapa dia ambil 4 pi r cube per 3? Dia sebenarnya 4 per 3 pi r cube sebab this one is the volume of sphere. This volume of sphere kali dengan gravity. Gravity tak ada masalah eh. Okay, kita just ambil density lah sebab uh, density of the fluid pun sama macam ball kan. So kita ambil uh, rule of ball minus rule of the water. So dia akan follow siapa? Uh, kalau kita tengok jawapan dia sepatutnya dia akan dapat negatif 0.258 newton. 0.258 newton ni akan follow uh, apa B. Atau apa follow buoyancy force. Uh, sebab daripada sini pun kita dapat tahu um, uh, ball of the uh, density of the ball is 0 0.084. Okay, while density of the water is 1. Uh, so definitely, uh, water is uh, greater than, density of water is greater than density of the ball. Okay, so in order for us to make, so definitely sepatutnya bola ni akan terapung sebab density of the ball is greater. Sorry, is 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 uh, is uh, uh, less than gravity of the water. So, sepatutnya bola ni akan terapung. Tetapi dalam keadaan ini, berapa value yang kita kena tahan supaya bola ni terus duduk di dalam air. So, kita terpaksa tahan negatif 0.28 58 meter. Sebab itulah yang bezakan dia. Okay. Uh, so, so, that's one problem. So, number two. A 20 kilogram lead lead uh, mass Rest on the bottom of pool. What is the volume of the lead? Okay, so using that density. Uh, ni kena refer lah eh. Dia refer buku. Sebab kita nak cari dia punya uh, density of the lead kan. Density of the lead saya tak ada. Tapi kita tengok nilai ni betul ke tak. Awak boleh check lah. Please double check. Double check your, uh, your, your books. Okay, 11.3 times power of 3 kilogram per meter cube. Okay, so in the end kita dapat. 1.77 and power of negative 3 meter cube. What buoyant force acts on the lead? 
all the lead. Okay, so what boil force? So definitely kita akan ada mvg lah. Okay, m water times g for the pastu ditukar kepada ini, which is rho of the water v of the lead ataupun v of the water pun boleh. Tapi v of the water nak dapat macam mana? So, kalau kita tidak ada lead. So lead itu akan jadi Uh, yang tadilah yang kita calculate daripada yang first tadi kan lag lah apa uh, volume of the water kita tak tahu so we are using the volume of the lag times g so in order to do that terdapat 17.3 meter nah, so kena actively calculate ya eh. kalau boleh tu, tu, calculate sama-sama dengan saya sekali ya eh. so find the lag's weight uh, weight of the lag so m lag kali dengan g lah biasalah 100 and 96 uh, meter. What is the normal force acting on the lead? So jawapan dia, uh, yang normal force tadi kita ambil lah N tambah B sebab dua-dua je ke atas tolak dengan W which is dapat jawapan dia 179 meter. Sebab apa dia? Cerita dia? Cerita dia sebab lead tu duduk di sebelah bawah submerge. Okay, rest on the bottom of the pool. Okay, so yang ada dekat sini mestilah normal, ada buoyancy dan ada Okay So I mean what Okay this is all about uh, Buoyancy force in the equations uh, Maybe I want to highlight On the topics earlier Okay So uh, the rest of the questions uh, Regarding uh, uh, Well, actually indispensable you can uh, you try you can do on your own uh, you can do it with your tutor right okay so let's look at this part okay number six okay a 200 kilogram load is hung on a wire of length four meters cross sectional area 0.2 times 10 power of negative four meter, meter square and the young modulus 8 times 10 power of 10 what is an increase in length Okay, when we talk about Young modulus, it's given here 8 times 10 power of 10 Okay, Newton per meter square, that is Y Ini, ini adalah Y Kita okay. kita ada apa tadi F per A equivalent to Y Delta L over L Okay, L ini adalah 4 meters Delta L dekat sini adalah uh, Tak tahu lagi berapa increase yang ni kita nak kita nak calculate yang ni nanti. So this one area is about uh, 0.2 10 power of negative 4. Force ialah mg. Maksud dia 200 kali dengan 9.8. Okay 200 kali 9.8. So kita nak delta L saja. Eh. Kita dapat 4.9 10 power of negative 3 meters. Tengok memang sikit je value dia. Eh. Kalau kita tukar kat dia tu. Tapi tak perlu pun kita tukar dalam meter per, uh, millimeter eh Just uh, leave the, the answers in SI unit Okay, should be okay Okay, we want to address one more Maybe in terms of bug If you do have bug Do you have bug? No Okay, alright. So I think that's the end of the uh, lecture. I think okay, we will continue uh, our lessons on uh, next week, inshallah. Okay, do you have a question? Ada soalan tak?